All right. Uh, welcome back. This is going to be lecture 26. I think today might be a bit short. I only want to cover um, a couple of pages of notes, um, just the way that the the sections are dividing up um, this week. So yesterday was a little bit of a longer one, I guess, than usual, and today's probably going to be a little bit short. But let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, what section were we doing before? Seven, one, two. Technically, this is just the, the end of that. We're going to open up with another example of getting eigenvalues. Um, and specifically, this is going to be an example of when you have an eigenvalue that is zero, because it is possible for an eigenvalue to be zero. Um, and then I'm going to have you finish up like the rest of this example on, on your written homework or possibly your online homework, depending on how I format it. But let's go ahead and get it started just so you can see what it's like when you have an eigenvalue turn out to be zero. So here's our matrix. It's going to be A. First step, as always, is going to be to look at the matrix Xi minus A. And again, you could write this out as x times an identity matrix is 3 by 3, and then actually do a subtraction, okay? But I look at it as go down the diagonal and say x minus, so x minus 2, and then here I'll have x minus 3, and then x minus 1, and then everybody else is just going to flip the sign. So this is going to be negative 2, positive 2, positive 1, negative 1, positive 1, negative 1. Okay, so hopefully we agree with that. The next thing you want to look at is the determinant of that matrix that we just looked at. Again, there's a lot of numbers in this matrix. Um, I'm not going to do all of the multiplications and the expansion and the simplifying and all of that. I'm going to tell you what this turns out to be for now. This is going to be x cubed minus 6x squared plus 8x equals 0. And we're looking for the roots of this guy. So let's factor as much as we can. Now there is an x in every term. So first of all, pull an x out. x squared then minus 6x plus 8. And let's try to factor that quadratic as well. And I'm thinking negative 4 and negative 2. And the roots of this equation, by the way, we can label this. This is our characteristic polynomial. The roots give us our eigenvalues. Okay, so this factor here of just a plain old x is what gives us an eigenvalue of 0. And our other eigenvalues are like 2 and 4, coming from those other factors. But this guy is the guy that I want you to see. Um, let's see what happens when we use that one. Okay, so then we would move into our next step of specifically looking at each eigenvalue and solving that homogeneous system. In this case, the matrix lambda i minus a would actually be, well, 0 times i minus a. In other words, 0. <laughs> like, nothing is happening, okay? This is just going to be the idea of plugging in 0 for the x. So go back and look at this matrix that you've already conveniently written down, and wherever you see the x, go ahead and plug in 0. Huh, well, just negative 2 there. Negative 2, 2, negative 1, negative 3, 1, 1, negative 1, and negative 1. Now that's also just the same thing as a negative a. So, you know, however you want to look at it. Now that is the matrix for our system, so We'll just copy him real quick and augment him with zeros. Negative 1, negative 3, 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1. And to solve this system, you would do how you usually do. Get the RREF. You can use your calculator. Turns out to be this guy. <laughs> okay, you can see that I have a pivot in column 1, a pivot in column 2. No pivot in column 3, so that means that x3 is the free variable. So we go ahead and say x3 is our um, parameter, call it t, as usual. The second row tells me that x2 actually just has to be 0. And the first row tells me that x1 needs to be 
And if you think of moving over the x3 to the other side, it needs to just equal x3, but x3 was t. So that means the solution to the system is of the form t times, and then the coefficients on the t's go 1, 0, 1. And this is already a nice looking vector. Ones are our favorite numbers, zeros are also our favorite numbers. So the eigenvector we're going to take for lambda being zero is one, zero, one. This is the eigenvector for specifically lambda one equals zero. Okay, um, I'm gonna have you finish this. on the written homework or the online homework. We'll see which one I make it. Um, and by finish, I'm just going to mean these other two eigenvalues. I'll have you guys analyze the, the eigenvectors for it. And for us right now, we are going to move on into 7, 1, 3, which is got a kind of a long, long title here. This is gonna be about eigenvalues and eigenvectors for special matrix types. Okay. Now, first of all, I'm going to recall to you a definition. I say recall because I don't think we've covered it technically in class, but I have introduced you to this concept on homework. Mm, I wanna say homework too, written homework maybe. Okay. The concept is, um, the idea of similar matrices. Okay, so um, two matrices, let's say A and B are n by n matrices. These guys are similar, which we write as A squiggle B. Okay, this is like a little floating tilde. Okay. Um, these guys are similar if and only if there exists an invertible, it has to be invertible, invertible matrix, we'll just call him P, such that A equals P inverse times B times P. Okay, this is what it means to be similar matrices. Notice that um, you could also like rearrange this um, to say, um, by rearrange, I want you to think of this as apply P on the left on both sides. Now then you would get P times A and over here, P times P inverse would give you just A, so that'll get rid of it, right? And then I want you to think of um, applying P inverse on the right on both sides, that would give me PA, P inverse equals, and the P times P inverse would just wipe out, so this would be B. Okay, so you can also rearrange it like this in case we need to do that later. Okay, and the reason why I wanna talk about similar matrices is because similar matrices have the same eigenvalues. Okay, now that's very exciting. Does it make sense? Suppose that you have an eigenvalue for A. So AX equals lambda X for some lambda some eigenvector X. Okay, so we're just assuming that we're talking about an eigenvalue for A. Now A is the same thing as P inverse B, P. So I just take the A and I replace it with that expression. Now, I would like you to think of applying P, multiplying by P on the left of both sides of this equation. Then what would you get? The P times P inverse, well, they just wipe each other out. So I would have B, P, X equals P lambda X. Okay, but this lambda is just a scalar. So scalar multiplication, you just bring it out front. Now notice something. Px 
is a matrix vector multiplication and it gives you a vector. And the same exact vector shows up over here. Okay, so now what I have is the form b times some vector equals lambda times some vector. And even if you want, we could even name this vector something else. Say that px equals y. Name that new vector, just name him y. by equals lambda y. And that's exactly what it means to say that lambda is an eigenvalue for b. Okay, so this is why similar matrices have the same eigenvalues. Now the eigenvectors that go with them definitely could be different, right? In, in the b situation, the eigenvector that goes with that lambda is px, not just x. Okay, but the eigenvalues themselves are the same. Okay, hang in there with me. You're like, why do I care? Life is going to get easier because of these. But I want to talk about one more thing. Um, we're going to remember one more concept. Elementary matrices. Remember those? Elementary matrices. OK, um, we used elementary matrices to um, row reduce the matrix. Uh, kind of by uh, each each row operation that you would do if you were trying to do Gaussian elimination and get to an REF or an RREF, each of those operations can be kind of written as an elementary matrix. Um, hopefully we remember this. It wasn't that long ago. Um, so I'm going to say elementary matrices can be used to row reduce a matrix. And that's going to be a good thing in a certain way. Let's do a, an example. Let's start with an example. And I'll demonstrate um, how we can use these. So let's say that I have a matrix here, A, and it is 33, 105, 105, 10, 28, 30, negative 20, negative 60, negative 62. Okay, these are big numbers. Sad face. Imagine to yourself, if I asked you for the eigenvalues of this matrix, you'd be like, okay, I'll do x minus, I'll get the determinant. Getting the determinant of a matrix like this with these big numbers has really sucks. Um, we would like to simplify, and we can simplify this until it's easy to see the eigenvalues, and I'm going to show you how to do that. First of all, consider the row operation of saying um, replace row 3 by row 3 plus 2 times row 2. Don't worry too much about where I'm getting these, just follow along with me for now. Okay, now the elementary matrix that would correspond with that, I'm going to call it E1. Remember that the way that you get the elementary matrix is you start with an identity matrix and then you do the action that you want to do. So I would have had an, an identity matrix kind of like this guy, right? But I would replace this row 3 by row 3 plus 2 times row 1, So I mean row 2. So I would have 2 times row 2 would give me a 2 here and I would still have here my 1. Now. The inverse of that matrix, E1, is going to be whatever elementary matrix you would need to undo that. So to undo taking row 3 and adding 2 times row 2 to it, we would take row 3 and subtract 2 times row 2 from it. So this is the inverse of that E. This guy undoes this operation. Now, if I were to multiply E1 times A times E1 inverse, that looks a heck of a lot like some kind of P times A times P inverse or something like that, right? So this matrix, if I did this multiplication, that matrix is similar to A. Okay? 
But if you actually do that multiplication, you get a, a, a nicer matrix. So if you do the multiplication, you would get 33, negative 105, 105, 10, negative 32, 30, and then 0, 0, negative 2. So all of a sudden, these zeros have appeared. We love zeros. <laughs> they make life very easy. I'm going to name this guy B. Okay, so that means that B equals E1A, E1 inverse. Okay, and if you think of those E's as like being P's, this is exactly what it looks like to say that those two matrices are uh, similar. Okay, but now I'm looking at a better matrix because it has zeros in it and those are always helpful. I'm going to do one more um, row operation here and again don't worry too much about where I'm getting it. But the operation is going to be replace row 1 with uh, row 1 minus 3 times row 2. And the elementary matrix that would correspond to that operation would be um, you wouldn't be changing these two rows, right? But your row 1 is going to be replaced with itself minus 3 times row 2, so it'll be 1, and then 0 minus 3 would be negative 3, and then 0 minus 0 is 0. And again, we think about how would you undo that action in order to get this inverse. And if you want to undo the effect of subtracting 3 times row 2, from row 1, then you would just add 3 times row 2. Okay, so that's the inverse of that E2. Now, E2 times B times E2 inverse, where B is this matrix up here, remember, this guy. Okay, turns out to be um, 3, 0, 15, 10, negative 2, 30, 0, 0, negative 2. And I'm going to name that new matrix C. Now this is a much better matrix. Why? I've got smaller numbers going on and I have all these zeros. Um, and that is so nice. That's going to be way better to work with. But I'm still similar to B which means that I'm still similar to A. So all of these matrices, B, C, and my original A, they're all similar matrices, so they all still have the same eigenvalues. Same eigenvalues. But it's going to be way easier to figure out the eigenvalues of this matrix. So let's go ahead and do it. The determinant of the matrix I, uh, xi minus c is what we use to figure out the eigenvalues of a matrix. So we're going to be taking the determinant of a matrix, and in the matrix I'm going to go down my diagonal and do x minus. So x minus 3 x minus minus 2 is x plus 2, and same thing, x plus 2. And then everything else is just going to flip signs. So 0, this will now be negative 15, negative 30, negative 10, 0, and 0. Now when you go to do this determinant, yes it is a 3 by 3, but check this out. Because I have all of those zeros, I can expand along this bottom row and life will be so good. So remember how to do a 3 by 3 determinant. Um, technically, I'm going across here and I'm going 0 times some submatrix minus 0 times some submatrix plus x plus 2 times a submatrix. And the submatrix, when you cross out the row and column for x plus 2, is x minus 3, 0, negative 10, and x plus 2. Okay, but of course these terms are just 0, so you don't even have to write them if you don't want to. So what I'm looking at here is x plus 2 and then the determinant of this 2 by 2 we just do using the 2 by 2 formula so we multiply down the diagonal x minus 3 times x plus 2 
and then subtract and multiply up the, the other diagonal direction, but 10 times 0 is just 0. Okay, so simplify one last time. x plus 2, x minus 3, times x plus 2. And that needs to equal 0, and that's our characteristic polynomial. Okay, so what are the roots of this guy? He's already conveniently factored. That's fantastic. Okay, so the, the roots that we get are a negative 2, and in fact, we get that twice. See, it shows up in this factor and also this factor. They're not next to each other, but uh, we have it twice. Multiplicity 2, so lambda 1 equals lambda 2 equals negative 2. And then we have another one, lambda 3, and that is a positive 3. So those are my, my eigenvalues. Okay, these are the eigenvalues of C. They are also the eigenvalues of B, and they are also the eigenvalues of A. So then what you could do is take these and go back to the matrix A and use them in the kind of step two of the process to find the eigenvectors that go with them. Okay, so um, I do want to say, yeah, um, the eigenvectors that correspond to those eigenvalues may differ amongst A, B, and C. Okay? The eigenvalues are the same between similar matrices. The eigenvector is not necessarily the same. So you would get the eigenvalues this way and go back to A. Okay. All right. So uh, this is why I said we're going to wait until we see how to do this in order to actually like compute the determinants of those matrices because otherwise it's a lot of writing. It's going to be a lot of writing if you don't um, kind of simplify the matrix down like this in order to get the, the determinant. Okay, let's talk about another special type of matrix. Um, we already know about this one, though. Triangular matrices. Okay, now let's just talk about this by looking at an example. Here's a triangular matrix. 1, 2, 4, 0, 4, 7, 0, 0, 6. Okay. Now we would be looking at the determinant of x times i minus a in order to get our characteristic equation. So the determinant of the matrix, I'm going to look down the diagonal and do x minus. So x minus 1, x minus 4, x minus 6, and then all the other numbers in here are just going to get the sign flip. So negative 2, negative 4, negative 7, and 0, 0, 0, those all stay the same. Okay, now if you want to get the determinant of this guy, it's very easy, right? Um, the determinant of a triangular matrix is the product of the diagonal entries. Remember? Recall determinant of triangular matrix is the product of the diagonal uh, entries. Okay, so getting this determinant is actually super easy. We're just going to go down the diagonal and multiply. x minus 1 times x minus 4 times x minus 6. And that needs to be equal to 0. That's our characteristic polynomial. And we look for his roots. Well, he's already factored. That's super nice. Okay, so the roots are a positive 1, right? 1. 4 and 6, that means that our eigenvalues are 1, 4, and 6. Notice! Where do you see these numbers? <laughs> 1, 4, and 6 were exactly the numbers on the diagonal. So actually, when you're looking at a triangular matrix, your eigenvalues are the diagonal entries. Same thing applies, by the way, to diagonal matrices, because diagonal matrices are 
simultaneously upper triangular and lower triangular, right? Um, they are a really, really special case of a triangular matrix, a really boring triangular matrix. So, so this is also true for diagonal matrices. They're just even simpler. Okay. All right. That is all that I want to do today because I don't want to start the next section. Um, tomorrow, in tomorrow's lecture, we're going to start 7.2, which is about diagonalization. Um, so we're going to go ahead and call this one here today. And uh, yeah, uh, that should be everything. <laughs>